Hey everybody, this is Rido, and we are back to the Samaritan Paradox. So we tricked the disciple into giving us the riddles, we solved the riddles, riddles and opened the door. Uh, hey, what are you so... doing? So... I... I am delivering the special goods to Mimir and Fenrir. Let me see. I know what Mimir has requested. It seems you have what Mimir has requested. I guess I will let you pass. We made the but fake milk. if it turns milk. out you have tricked me, pray that the gods help you. Sure. She opened the gate and entered the long and winding tunnel through the mountain. We very possibly are going to be done with this either really quickly or they're going to have to give us several more scenes and, and a couple more puzzles. It was dark and at several times the tunnels branched at off in several directions. After two hours, she reached a chamber lit up by odd emeralds and a singular ray of light. Okay. So. This room is partially illuminated by phosphorescent emeralds inserted in the rock walls. So we've got another puzzle to do before we can get there. Just try the door like a normal person. Probably booby trapped, probably a mistake. She pushed the door and was wet by the sheen of a setting sun. Hmm. Really? So you could have just not read the book? Oh. Let's go back and read the book. It appeared to be a book on how to read some kind of demonic language. There we go. We need this. this she knew better than to touch anything to do with the realms of demons. The first page of the book explained number signs apparently. So we know what to do now. Uh, that whole chapter was just getting her, getting the character in the story to the point where we could use the demonic language translation to come over here, to come over to the bunker, to go down the hall and look at the demonic language on this wall. Let's see if this voice is on the other side. See, that's the dangerous part. We've got this old sack. And... We've got the signs. And... Let's see. It's... Let's call this a sideways V, a number four, a tree, and a circle. Go back to this point and look at the book and that makes that six and one and two and five. Six one two five. Six one two five. Appeared to be the correct code. But do I really want to? Yeah. So we got the code in there. But we need to do something with this ventilation fan. We need to smell them out, I think. Hmm. So we've taken the ventilation fan off. Hmm. 
And I guess we can switch the cords. Interesting. And then take the flame panel and put it back on the hull. Oh, no, I guess I'm just gonna block the... Block the hole? Hmm. It's probably a more effective way of disseminating the smell. Hmm. So the idea that this is just gonna suck all the air out of the room is kind of unrealistic. Hmm. Hmm. Do I have some kind of lighter or something? Hmm. That's, that's the part that I think I'm missing is... I need to fill the place with smoke. And let's see. Hmm. Turn this off. Yeah, and unless we're gonna get fish or something. Old sack on the ventilation. Hmm. Old sack on the compartment. It would, this would serve better purpose than the hole to the left. A hole. Stuff the hole with a rag. Now. So a little bit of a pixel hunt there. And. I've reversed the wires. Probably for no reason. But whatever. Let's try this. Hmm. Fun fan sucking air out of this room leading it to the room on the right. Hmm. Hmm. The wheelbarrow here is just so I can... Yeah, and unless I'm supposed to use like the cassette tape on the ventilation. I don't think I'm doing the right thing. Let's turn off it and switch the wires back. And see if I just didn't need to switch the wires at all. Hmm. Look at this. I've reversed the cables on the motor, and you can't undo that reverse. So, unless we're supposed to put like a paper knife in this. Hmm. Well, maybe if we take the fan out completely and then turn it on, maybe it'll start a fire. Otherwise, we need to look around, see what part of what we missed. Hmm. 
There's something more to this. Clearly. An imaginary fan is making noise. Alright, if we go down the hill... I don't believe there's anything... Yeah, I don't think there's anything we can do. Boy, did he shift in scale quite a, a bit there. So let's look at the cabin. Check the mailbox. Let's see, is there anything else on this screen? I don't believe so. Is there anything else that would make sense? too early to sleep so we're not to the next day kiosk is closed we could go to the grocery store and see if we could find something bad smelling It's interesting to have a game where you might be doing the Hello exact there. same thing. Oh, the difference is oh. once you are uh, in one part you're in the present day talking to a grocery store man and in one part you're in the past or a fantasy story that uh, where you're My talking game. to an innkeeper. Hmm. But effectively it's the same if I go back into the church hall, we could talk Excuse to the waitress. Me. Don't like when games make you wait and walk to each other. Hello. All I can do is ask him about You're things. Welcome. And I don't think there's anything here so I'm thinking maybe the activist uh, area we should go back to our own house just to make sure there's not something there like books clock radio pieces Books, bookshelf, IKEA furniture, everywhere. Herbert. Herbert is looking slightly better today, and when I looked at him, uh, I just did get an achievement. Hmm. Burgewell State. Doesn't seem like there's anything here. God's figuring fire. Unless I wanted to burn something. Which I don't think the game's gonna be too keen on burning anything. So I'm collecting all of this potential evidence against people. 
It could be used against people, at least. Veronica's no longer in this room. Fish tank. Oh, am I gonna have to kill the fish? That would rather suck. If I have to kill the fish just to... To get a fish to then... Make fishy smells. So maybe Signia isn't going to be here either. Let's see. Yep. Everybody's gone. However, if you're going to sell the place, you, you seriously are going to sell the place with no thought at all for uh, for taking the family photos off the wall. There, it's one thing to sell a place uh, with the furniture in it. Sure, that kind of makes sense, but you, you kind of want the personal stuff gone. this for example I still have no ba business in the basement um, actually at the Berkwell estate we need to just probably call everybody while we are at the near telephone let's call Sarah no reply on Sarah Call Jorgen. Speak. Hmm. This is Ord again. Ord, you need to get over here if you want to talk. I can't discuss these things over the phone. Hmm. So, we'll call Magnus. Magnus here. Hey, hmm. it's me. Ord, my friend. I'm reading a really strange fairy tale. Okay. By that Bergwall? Yep. So it's like mm. ordinary fiction. Well, ordinary, ordinary. It reads like a fairy tale. But I'm only reading it to find clues for Sarah. Seems like you have your hands full then. Yeah, pretty much. How are you and Anika? Ah, uh, same old, working. But Anika's growing really large. She's... what? Oh, right. She's expecting. We're hmm. expecting. Of course. Uh, thought of any names? I don't think I've asked you that. Oh, we've got a few. Names are really important. Hmm. <laughs> they are. By the way, have you spoken anything to Johanna? No, why would I? Maybe she... Maybe it's time you talked? Talked things through? Magnus, I know you and Anika love Joanna. And that it'd be very convenient for you if we got back together. <laughs> there is no chance in hell that's gonna happen. I've put the idea of the two of us being together behind me. But there is no chance in hell that's gonna happen. I've put the idea of the two of us being together behind me. Interesting, right, the game okay. glitched there. That's Sarah, is she a nice girl? A, a nice girl? She's Although, that might have been my fault for scrolling client. off the Magnus, I gotta go. window. I'll talk to you later. Don't forget our Friday date. Don't forget our Friday date. I won't. Hmm. Man, that feels glitched. That certainly feels glitched there. I'm gonna keep the mouse right in the middle of the screen this time. One, two, three, click for her. So let's go talk to the activist. I am square. And I'm gonna hold on to one coin, but maybe I should put them all in there in the fountain. Hmm. 
And let's see if we can use the coin in the jukebox. Break the silence. Rescue me, lock it away, feeding on your love. I wish I could always be like that. Morning breaks. Let's go feeding on your love. And that was another achievement. Maybe it wasn't the words that I told you, but the silence in between. Should I regret it? Ask for repentance. Can't get any more coins. What I have seen. Let's go talk to Anya. Anna. What if I opened up? Excuse me. Hi there. Hi, Lord. So, do you often come here? In fact, I do. It's a loud, anonymous place. Perfect for exchanging information. Hmm. I just have to deal with the occasional drunkard and some really poor song choices. So, what do you do when you're not researching things for Sarah Bergwall? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we could do the Indiana Jones reference uh, from the Indiana Jones and the Crusade. I sell leather jackets. Really? Are they all from 71, like the rest of your clothes? <laughs> Good one. I'm a literature PhD student. Interesting. So is Jonathan Bergwall a research subject? In a way, yeah. I also study cryptology. Cryptology? Like ciphers? Yes. I've gathered that Jonathan left behind secret messages. Do you think they could be clues as to who killed him? I don't know yet. They seem more related to various dirty deals and potential scoops. Yes, his moral crusading. I'm so fucking tired of hearing what a fighter he was. How the evils of the world got the better of him. If you're that hell-bent on becoming a saint, you're hiding something, don't you think? Not mm. necessarily. So we agree that there were those who wanted him gone, like those conducting the dirty business you speak of. Considering all his journalistic efforts through the years, lots of people probably celebrated his death. True. So, what books do you enjoy reading? I read mostly... Pretentious shit? That's one way of putting it. So you're not reading Bergwall's detective stories, then? <laughs> no, not really. I have to ask, how come you trust me like this? You've just completely spilled the beans about your case, about Patrick, and everything. Good question. I followed you around for a bit. You seem pretty harmless. I think you're just a common guy, a bit out of your element. You have a trustworthy face, I guess. Hmm. Funny, I'm actually a convicted murderer. Hmm. Yeah, people say that. And you have a pretty face. Congratulations, you're the hundredth guy saying that since I came into this pub about an hour ago. Cool. Uh, what did I win? You get to buy me a drink and watch in awkward silence while I down it far too quickly. That's how it usually pans out. Are you always this sarcastic? <laughs> Not when I'm the animal rights activist. You should have hit on her instead. She would have been thrilled. I thought about it, but I was instructed to keep walking. Do you always do as you're told? Hmm. I once tried on my own way. It got me divorced. Oh man, that's really fucking pathetic. I know. Hmm. And then let's ask her about entering the bunker, I guess, or the second chapter. And s just ask her some questions. Jonathan's son is a bit secretive. It's obvious that he's cut all ties with the rest of the family. Hmm. He rarely mentions his sister or mother if I don't demand some information. I don't think there's a resentment. Just some kind of avoidance. I don't really know what he does for a living, but I think he's some kind of consultant. Hmm. Sometimes he goes abroad in business for long periods. He really wants there to be a murderer. Maybe suicide is something shameful in his eyes. Maybe it's only the insurance money he's after. Hmm. Where can I find him? Ord, I'm feeling our exchange of information is getting a bit unidirectional here. 
I'm afraid I'm going to need something more from you first. Help me with my case, and I'll give you Patrick's address. Interesting. Let's For just now, go through everything. I don't everything. know more than I've told you. But if you should get a hold of information concerning his death, let me know. Hmm. A weapons manufacturer? Are they involved? Was Jonathan doing something on them? You think fast. Hmm. I haven't found any links between Jonathan and Fozorb. I haven't heard of anyone from Fozorb operating on the island. I see. So I'm just gonna go through everything. So Wyvern which and seems Fozorb to be useful. are in some unholy alliance, and Jonathan was about to expose them. The annoying thing is that I haven't found any indications of Fozorb or Wyvern being after Jonathan. Remember that Jonathan died while on a boat trip. It's not likely he'd have taken an obvious enemy with him in the boat. So you suspect it was someone he trusted? That's the direction I'm looking now, yeah. Hmm. I think I have a pretty decent picture of what kind of person he was. Hmm. A sanctimonious know-it-all. Oh, I'd like to think much of his journalistic work was really useful. He did expose a lot of ugly fish, didn't he? I'm more interested in him as a person. I don't care that much about evil corporations or corrupt politicians. Fine. But some of us do. Hmm. There's a lot of conversation here I chose not to have with her. I haven't talked to her yet, and Patrick prefers it that way. But, well, I've done my homework on her. I can tell you this much. She's not on my list of suspects. Why on earth would she? Oh, don't look so shocked. When there's an inheritance involved and disagreeing siblings, murders tend to occur. Hmm. From what little I know, neither Sarah or Patrick seemed to like their father very much. But Sarah had an alibi, and Patrick wouldn't kill his father and make it look like suicide. At least not before two years after the life insurance policy was purchased. Also, he wouldn't hire a private detective, would he? Sometimes killers get so confident they hire detectives just to appear innocent. Hmm. And we'll just go through everything. I haven't had any reasons to look into the private nurse. Do you think she's interesting for the case? Oh, uh, no, not really. Uh, just wondering if you knew anything I didn't. She seems like a sweet girl. Hmm. So I'm hoping this is accomplishing something. Otherwise, we're just kind of having conversations with her. See you around, Ord. Hmm. We have no more coins. Hmm. So that's the end of my coin fun. Unfortunately, I can't get any more coins out of the sofa either. Bar. Odd that the bar is missing a bartender. We're getting more backstory of the main character too, and that's that's fun to have really this third story happen uh, on top of the two main stories of his. Uh, how do we escape? Exit. It's over here. We'll go to Cooper Street and talk to Jorgen. Hey, Jorgen. Yep. And let's just ask about everything. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? Hmm. But sure, that old geezer made tons of enemies. Of course, his suicide note speaks against that theory. It's not that hard to copy someone's I'm handwriting. I'm pretty sure we've I mean, already asked him to everything up to that analysis. this point. But would you say Jonathan was ever suicidal? No, not Because this is just repetitive. 
stuff, so I, I don't think there's a reason to go through the rest of this. No worries, buddy. And looking around here. So we've been everywhere, and clearly there's just something I'm missing. Like, there'd be no reason to go to the roof. Hmm. We're supposed to be down this hall. I think I'm gonna have to cheat again. I think I'm gonna have to look at the walkthrough, because... Unless I'm supposed to stab a battery, or in some other way put some item like, in with the compartment. This in the compartment. This in the compartment. This. Like this in the compartment. This in the compartment. Hmm. And we have so many pieces of paper that None of it makes any sense. If there was vegetables somewhere, it would make sense. But the only place that even seems to imply they would have vegetables would be the... Uh, would be the grocery store, and we already tried that. Hmm. So, unless... Maybe it's a trick that... you're supposed to leave. And maybe leave the whole area. And then maybe sleep. Like, if you really are just supposed to move time forward. Mm. There's definitely multiple places to sleep, so that is part of this. It seems un unbelievable, though, that the ventilation would just suck all the oxygen out of an area. And if that didn't work, I don't know what would. Hmm. Button panel is open. The fan is sucking air out of this room, leading to the room on the right. Which... I don't know, unless I'm supposed to put that... There's probably a more effective way of disseminating the smell. Smell of what? Hmm. Yep, it's time to cheat again. Unfortunately, we're doing pretty good, but any point-and-click adventure game that I play these days, just for time management reasons, if, if I don't have the solution almost instantaneously, I'm just off uh, to the walkthrough. Uh, of course, a lot of point-and-click adventure games I've already played before, so in the dark recesses of my mind, I already know the solutions to them. But 
when it's new, it can be difficult. I don't feel like these puzzles are particularly even that difficult. It's just that I'm missing one thing, the one thing I needed to know. And there certainly is room for a hint to pop up after a few minutes, for him to mumble something to himself, for characters to drop hints at a certain point, uh, or for there just to be a full hint or walkthrough system in the game. It, it would be rather nice. Anyways, that's going to be it for this recording. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want a friend to follow me on basically any social media sites, there's a whole bunch of links down below. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.